to share this out. So we will record. Um, so we just want to talk about letters today. And really, I plan on this being very informal um, and just for you guys as a chance to answer, to ask questions. And I may or may not be able to answer them, um, but I can sure try. Um, letters is, um, you know, this book here and then there are online um, online modules that you go through um, it's been it's been great to be going through it great learning um, and I think you know for right now as far as opportunities for next year um, training um, I think you know our, our plan is that we'd have be able to offer a cohort at ESU 8 but that would be up in the air a little bit because the facilitator training that I'm planning to attend would happen this summer in Colorado and that honestly I who knows it may or may not happen they may be able to provide it distance learning I just don't know the answer to that for sure yet um, the the cohort through Nebraska MTSS though should be a definite go um, for next year um, the only thing with that one is that um, you know you we sent out the document where you would apply um, and that needs to be returned to um, Mary Jo McElrose, I can't think of her last name, but it's on there, um, by March 31st. Um, and it's not a lot to fill out. It was a pretty easy thing to fill out. Um, they cover half the cost of your materials, um, through that. And then there's no cost for training to you, except your district would be paying the subs for those four days. Um, the only, the only thing with that is they haven't yet set where those four training dates would be held. So there is one training date for each unit of letters. So you have units one, two, three, and four. So there's one training date for each of those that's on-site training. Um, and so when we asked about that, it sounded like it was going to be, um, they'll see who all their participants are and they will have it you know, geographically across the state. So there will be some travel involved, um, depending on your location. Like I was thinking, well, for my location where I live, if they have one in Lincoln, I can probably, or Omaha, I can drive from my house to that. It wouldn't involve a hotel stay for me probably. Um, but then if they go out West, which you would think they might for one, um, you know, there's probably going to be a hotel and, and some travel costs. Can I please come to the office? Sorry. No, that's okay. Um, so I was just thinking maybe somebody had a question. Um, so that would be the only probably additional fee with the Nebraska MTSS project. Um, and then for our ESU 8 cohort, uh, hopefully we're able to offer that next year. Um, the cost there would be, um, you know, the cost of the materials your district would be paying. Um, and then the cost of subs, but travel would be, we would be holding those um, in Neely. And when I talked to um, a contact at um, Sopers West last week um, about kind of timing these out, because I know subs are so hard to come by, um, we talked about maybe trying to hold one training. So we talked about a couple different options. Um, one would be, well, what if we only held, um, what if we waited to start? Because, you know, the beginning of the year is so busy for teachers. Um, what if we waited to start and then we held at least one of the sessions kind of after the school year is over? So then you'd be only out of your districts for three days. Um, then when I talked to him, he said, really, if you were going to, because there are um, bridge to practice activities for each session within each unit, you have a bridge to practice activity and what that is is it takes what you've learned in that session and it's an activity that you're going to be doing with students or with a lesson that you're teaching or something like that um, and so he said you know really the first unit completing that one when teachers aren't with students would be easier than completing a later unit because of the bridge to practice activities and i hadn't thought about that so then he and I talked about the, the possibility of starting earlier in the year and maybe if we could get you your materials. But again, with, with all this virus thing going on, I don't know, but that's probably what we'd be looking at. So we'd be looking at trying to get, your, get you your materials maybe during the summer and then trying to hold a training session early in August. So one of the days would be then and then maybe two during the school year and then maybe one after school is out in May. 
So maybe we'd only be looking at two days for SUPS. Um, and he said that would be fine to space those out during the year. That would be totally fine um, to do it that way. So, you know, timing wise, I guess we don't know exactly the answers to that, but um, just kind of some options that we're looking at. What happy um, yeah. for the MTSS one, I just wanted to comment that it's also not guaranteed if you apply. It's an application process. Right. So they're only taking six per region and we have three ESUs in our region. Mm -hmm. But we still, if that's the option you'd like to go, we still would like people to apply, but just letting you know it's not a for sure thing. If you right, don't. right. Yeah, and so six across our three ESUs and that's ESU 1, 8, and 17. <clears throat> so it, we, we have no way to predict. Um, who would be applying or how many from those other ESUs. So definitely it would not be a guarantee. Yes, thank you for pointing that out, Tony. As far as, um, as you guys are thinking about questions, um, as far as the content goes, um, you know, I just wanted to share a few things that I think have been really, you know, as I'm thinking about going through letters and why it would be good for teachers to go through it, you know, teachers matter more to the student success than any program that they're using or any aspect of schooling. It's the teacher that really makes the difference. So when we, when we make sure that our teachers are educated in the science of reading, it really makes a difference in, in the teaching and, and in the outcomes for students. And, um, you know, there was some research in the program about, you know, I don't know, somewhere around 29% maybe of teacher preparation programs really only prepare teachers on all all of the big five areas of reading, um, you know, so there is some more learning to do. And plus, um, you know, when I went through my teacher education training, well, that's been a few years ago. And so there is definitely new research. And so the thing about letters is that, you know, it's, it's updated content based on research. Um, it really bridges that research into your practical classroom activities. You can apply it to any um, reading program that, that you're using, any intervention program, you can just make it stronger by using what you're learning in letters um, to build up what you're already doing. Um, those bridge to practice activities that go along with each session um, really help you to transfer what you've learned in the program to your classroom practice. Um, and so I'll just give you a little bit of an overview. So like, um, I don't know if you viewed any of the video, the video that we sent out or um, the handout or anything, but um, so you get a letters manual um, and um, that's your main material that you have. And then there's also an online learning platform. So there's four units in this volume and then there's also volume two, which is units five through eight. And within each unit, um, there are eight sessions. Um, so like right now, I'm a little bit behind in my pacing, honestly, so I'm not quite exactly on track, but so right now, um, this is where I'm at, and you can see there are activities to do in the book. At, um, as you go along too, there's activities to do, um, plus your reading, your reading information, um, and your reading research. Um, so like all kinds of research things in here. Um, so you read, and then also then you have this online learning platform, and so for each session, the reading, it, the amount of time, I would say it varies um, for each session, but I usually probably figure the reading part of the manual and doing, a, you know, the work that's involved in there probably takes 30 to 45 minutes, somewhere around there. Some are longer, some are shorter. Um, you know, I would say the reading part wouldn't take you um, an hour, but it could take you up to 45 minutes probably. Um, and then the online part also for each session it gives you um, as you open it up online then it shows you about how long you would allow for that session or how long it takes it would probably take you. Um, and so usually they're around an hour some are longer some are a little bit shorter but it's usually around an hour online and that's just the online part. Um, and then you also have your bridge to practice activity outside of that. Um, some of the sessions, um, I don't know, I think the longest was probably an hour and a half maybe, um, and some are shorter, 50 minutes. Um, you can do part of the online. It, it, it stops in the middle of a lesson. If you're like, oh, I have 15 minutes, I could quick do part of it, but I can't do all of it. You can do that. You can do a little bit here and there. It, it saves your progress as you go along. 
um, and you're not just watching online. Um, they, there's video clips and then there's activities for you to do. So it takes what you've read and it explains it more. Um, it also um, shows you what it would look like in a classroom. So there's clips of teachers so you can see, oh, they talked about in the book this alphabet arc activity, what does that look like? Um, they talk about orthographic mapping, what does that look like? Um, so it shows you in action what it looks like and then it shows you what it might look like in a lesson and then usually that's your bridge to practice activity is using it then um, in your own lesson or with kids. Um, there's also a test that you take at the end of each session after you've read and viewed the content online. Then the last thing that you do is you take a check for understanding it's called and they're, they're not that long. Um, and if you don't get a, you know, a certain grade, you can retake it. Um, there are multiple choice. It's not like you're filling in answers or anything, but um, some of those are more difficult than others. Um, some are a little bit tricky, but you know, teaching reading is tricky. So. Um, so that's kind of what the online looks like. Um, I really like the mix of it. So the, the reading and the online part is just, it's a really good way to learn. Um, and it's just so flexible. You could do it anytime. Um, you know, if I do my reading outside of school, then if I think I might have time over lunch, then I might try to jump onto the website over lunch and, you know, watch a little bit here and there. Um, but otherwise I do it mostly in the evenings is when I've been doing it. But um, it's just been really, really good learning. So I would, some of my top learning um, highlights that going through unit one or through um, volume one, um, really learning more about advanced phonemic awareness um, and Dr. David Kilpatrick's work. A um, lot of talk about the continuum of phonemic awareness activities um, and how that relates to, um, and then how, how phonemic awareness relates to orthographic mapping and building those reading skills for kids. Um, a lot of learning on the major types of reading difficulties, including dyslexia, um, errors specific to English language learners. Um, so a lot of good information about English language learners in there too. Um, learning about Aries phases of word reading development and how that relates to kids and kind of being able to see where kids might be in that developmental process. Um, so those have been kind of some of my highlights as I've gone through. Um, does that spark any other, any questions from you guys about any part of it? Would you say that what you're learning can be um, like used in interventions or just for mm -hmm. a classroom teacher, whole group learning, like we do sound partners, EIR, are some of the things you're learning, could they be applied to those interventions with a one-on-one -on -one or in that kind of setting? Absolutely, and I've actually, um, done some, um, you know, where I've had some of my, um, some resource teachers or special education teachers or title teachers, or intervention teachers, hi, um, in some way that they're stuck, like this kid is really stuck on this particular thing. Oh, uh -huh. um, and so we, I've helped them use some of this material to um, build up some component of what they're doing. Okay. Um, I have a, um, some students um, who've been really stuck in their reading intervention and so um, related to this, but I also got some other information from Dr. Kilpatrick. And so, um, you know, we've built in some advanced phonemic awareness, which most of our programs don't go enough go far enough in phonemic awareness activities. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we're incorporating that into the first part of before they even start their intervention. And so trying to see if we can make some gains with kids in those okay. ways too. Yeah, definitely. Okay. It would really apply to all, yeah, classroom intervention, definitely both. Mm -hmm. Is this something that like we can get credits for? I'm working toward a degree right now. I mean, it sounds like a, a class. It is. And you know, um, I have not checked into that a ton, but um, it is something we need to look more, more into. And we were talking about that stuff and Tony and I, and then kind of the COVID um, happened. So, um, but I, my husband's niece has been going through um, letters um, at her school in Blair, and mm. she is using it as an elective for her mm. master's through Dome. I don't okay. know if other colleges also would accept it, but don't have, sure. and I don't know exactly the logistics of that. So we'd have to look at that further, but yeah, I would think so. Okay. Yeah. I could check in with my college too. Okay. Yep. 
can just okay. if we're not an MTSS school, yeah, new superintendent, I can still do it though as just as a teacher. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. that's and, my understanding. Um, and then as like the lingo and stuff, I mean, it's not okay. If I, just like she said, just the title teachers using it, or do I really got to get K through six staff on board with it? You know what I'm saying for the these kids. Yeah, and that's that was a question that um, another district had asked too. Like, are we looking at should we just send one person through it, or should we? Um, you know, I think ideally um, we'd have multiple people trained in a district. Um, but I think maybe as we look at getting our feet wet, maybe you, maybe if you can have one or two people go through together, I think that would be great. Um, I think what, what other places have seen happen is that they might send one or two people through and then those people share all that they're learning. And then it's like, oh, we do need all of our K through the K through three teachers to go through this. Um, so I think either way, um, but I think you know, learning more about the science of reading is important. And when I was talking to, it would be important for all teachers. Um, when I was talking to the, um, oh, the gentleman that I was talking to at Soberus, um, I was trying to ask, because um, I wasn't totally clear, because I haven't gone through volume two yet. So I'm in volume one now. And um, he said, well, volume two, um, goes more into um, vocabulary and reading, writing, connection, and um, connecting oral language and vocabulary to reading and how important it is that kids have the, those skills too, um, text-driven comprehension, those kinds of things. But you don't go through unit two separately. Um, you have to go through unit one in order to go, or volume one in order to go through volume two. So it's not like volume one is for K2 and then volume two is for three through 12 or whatever. Um, he said really it's, it's going through all of it together to learn about the science of reading. Um, you know, it's okay to go through volume one only, but you cannot go through volume two only. Um, and so that was just something else that I just found out as well. Um, and, and they say, um, you know, it, and, and I would see this too, it's definitely applicable for really all teachers of reading and language arts, reading and writing, um, especially in those elementary years. And then they talk about intervention teachers all the way up through 12th grade. Because, you know, we do have kids, unfortunately, really back in the very early days. Other questions? I'm sorry, my alerts keep going off. I was trying to mute them. Yeah. Hey, Tina, I think too, I mean, it's like everything you wanted to know about reading but weren't taught in college. Like, I think about back my reading methods and just the things that we're missing, and I think every teacher would benefit from this, and we hear from our colleagues at other ESUs that teachers who have been teaching for like 20 years go through this program, and they're like, oh my god, why didn't I do this sooner? Why didn't I have this information? You know, it's the essentials that we should all have if we're going to teach little kids especially, but I think even as they get older, we have those kids that are missing those skills mm -hmm. and you know, it has such valuable information to teach them to read too. I, and I mean, I agree with you there and that's, that's what I want to do. But I didn't know if, it, if I could come by myself, if I can't get in, you know, sometimes when things are offered, you have to bring a team. Yeah, this isn't, this isn't one of those things. You can definitely awesome. attend one person for a district or a team is fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, well, I'll keep my fingers crossed, but. Um, I don't know. I'm going to try <laughs> um, sharing my screen real quick just to show you what, um, what the pacing guide looks like. Not This would not be your pacing guide or anything for next year, but this is just kind of what a pacing guide looks like. So they actually send you a pacing guide. Um, we'll see if I can get it to work. Okay, share. Okay, can you guys see that pacing guide up there? Are you able to see it? Yep. Yep. Okay. So um, what, how it works is you, you work through unit one, all the different sessions, 
and then you complete a unit one assessment. And the unit, this is just suggested. It's, it's like a college pacing guide. You know, they're just suggesting this might be where you're at. Um, to let you know if you're behind or not. And then you have your unit one in-person training as the post-unit training. And that's where you gather together um, to do that one day in-person training after each unit. So um, these were, mine was Ethel by Fall. Um, and then unit two is the same thing. You go through all the different sessions and then you have that post-unit training together. And then unit three and then unit four. So just kind of letting you guys know what that looks like. Um, they suggest that you allow a week for each session. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take that off of there. Okay, um, other questions that you have? Kathy, are there certain age levels of kids you need to work with while you go through? Um, you know, not necessarily. Um, they just kind of say to find, um, you know, you can find students um, that would apply. So that would apply. Assessments that we give to kids. Um, the thing that I've had to work through a little bit um, for me, just with my job position, would be like um, for the, the last couple ones have been looking at a phonics lesson. And so borrowing materials from someone to look at that phonics lesson um, and then maybe talking with the teacher about adjusting that phonics lesson. Um, so not really. Um, if you didn't have the materials exactly, there are ways to work around that too. Um, but no, not, not necessarily certain ages of kids that you need to work with. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I don't know if I can hear you. Are there when other? do you guys need everyone registered by for the ESU one? Well, I think I put in the email May 1st. Um, and again, I, you know, um, that would just be probably, we're not charging anything at this point. So it'd just be kind of getting people to sign up and, and see that we have enough for a cohort um, and then looking at what that <laughs> hopefully um, getting the training done and then trying to get a pacing schedule set up for next year would be kind of our first steps. Yeah. Yeah, and then the only cost for ours is the materials and, and enough to cover for lunches those days, so. Right. And for the... Um MTSS one with the state, they didn't tell us the date of when they would know their applicants, did they? I don't think they did. Not that I saw. Um, I had asked Mary Jo a little bit and I thought she said they were hoping um, early to mid April to get back to people. Um, but again, I think that those dates are all um, very um, up in the air right now, probably just because they might have other things that they're dealing with. But. And I thought, you know, um, Tony, they came in and had a meeting with us, and I thought they, they told us they're going to get back to us on the dates, but I thought that's something I could email about okay. just to see. But I mean, the dates for the actual sessions. Oh, Not okay. Yeah. Letting people know, but. Yeah. I would just say, I mean, it's as far as the one or two, go ahead sorry, for the one or two years. Can you sign up for the first year and then wait and decide on the second year? Or okay, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, you know, I would just say um, it's really been probably some of the greatest learning um, that I've had about reading, honestly. Um, you know, you can do your own reading and you can, you know, if I were just reading the manual, but having that online and then the in-person days has just really, it really just solidifies it where you can see, oh, that's what it looks like in action. That's what that means. Maybe I've even read about that before, but I didn't exactly um, 
see it in action, um, you know, and, and there's just more and more research. So one example would be orthographic mapping. So I've read about orthographic mapping before, um, but until I really saw how they lay it out in the manual and then in the video um, presentations and then going to the in-person day, it's like, oh gosh, I get it now, you know, we're just reading it on my own. It was kind of hard to make the actual connection to what it might look like. Now I know what it looks like and I know what it sounds like and I know how to do it. Um, and so it just, and, and that's everything that you learn in there. It just really, you know, solidifies it rather than I just read about it. And now maybe I know how, what that means, but maybe I don't. Well, you, you know it, you know it when you're done because of the, the video and the extra things that you do. It just really makes, makes it um, where you know what is meant by what you read. Um, I just want to say, like, I'm super excited to be able to attend this um, just to add to my background knowledge in the job I do. But um, one of the things if I was a teacher that might be overwhelming hearing is the added on work maybe at night uh, or so forth. And I know you said you did it at lunch or after school. But I would think your district would be okay with, since this is for your school and not just yourself for a college class, I would think they'd be okay with you doing it during your plan time or before or after school. Yeah, if you so. had an in-service or, you know, a training day open. Yeah. Um, so those type of things might be open for you to catch up, like if they had a day at school or something. Yeah. And it, I, I probably didn't... Um, you know, where they lay out a week for you to complete that whole session. Um, and if you figure it's probably going to take you, if you figure two hours, um, I didn't always do a little bit every night, but it'd be very easy to do a little bit every night. And it really wouldn't be that much every night that you're doing. I was probably more like, I'm going to sit down and do the reading one night or one day. And sometimes that was a weekend too. You know, I'm going to sit down and do the reading part. I found that worked better for me if I read first and then I watched the online content and I could break the online content up a little bit. And then I tried to do the test right away while I had it all fresh in my mind and then the bridge to practice after that. So if the bridge to practice went into the next week, well, that's okay. I was working on my next session, you know, but um, I think, you know, where they have it paced out for you it does really give you quite a bit of time, but it is a time commitment, definitely. Um, but there is time to get those things done, definitely. Mm -hmm. Other questions? If you do think of other questions or your administrators have other questions, um, you know, Tony, Steph, or I are available anytime, um, you know, via email, via Zoom, via phone call, whatever works best for you guys. Um, so really anytime, anything that pops up, just shoot us an email. Um, I think the intent with recording this today is that we'll then send it out to the same group that we invited. So um, administrators and reading leaders and districts um, would then get the recording. Um, so as you're talking about things with those people, if they weren't able to be in person, if things come up, just you know, shoot us an email for a question or a Zoom session or whatever would work best. Thank you guys for attending. Yes, thank you so much. Hope it thank works for you guys to do it. Yeah. Take care, wash your hands. Um, don't get close to people. <laughs> All those good things. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you.